Hello, Blake Rudis here with F64 Academy, and today I am like a little school kid excited to show you how to make animated GIFs in Photoshop. Now, animated GIFs have a place. They aren't just for making little quips at your friends and putting them on their Facebook pages. You can also make some really cool videos, kind of like this, mini short clips that can then be put on a website or something like that to maybe show more about the location that you were alongside the photo that you took of that area. So let's go ahead and hop into Bridge. I got a lot of cool stuff to show you. So for this particular tutorial, I'm going to be starting out in Adobe Bridge. I'm going to go from Adobe Bridge into Adobe Camera Raw, do all my edits on the images in Adobe Camera Raw, and then move into Photoshop for the creation of the animated GIF. So what we're looking for, particularly with this type of animated GIF, now this isn't one of those uh, fun animated GIFs that you can poke fun at your friends with on uh, Facebook, all right? This is an animated GIF that you can post to your website that could maybe be like a, almost like a short video that shows the location that you are shooting in, maybe next to the actual picture, which can give the viewer of the picture even more of a sense of what you were doing and where you were, which is really kind of cool. So for this, uh, this image here, I was on the North shore of Oahu. It was a great time to be shooting beautiful weather, but we also had about 50 foot swells that day, uh, that particular week, actually the swells were getting larger and larger and larger. So the waves were bigger and bigger coming faster and faster. And it was, it was pretty interesting. So I took advantage of that, found this really awesome spot and just kind of sat there and I was doing a lot of long exposure stuff and these aren't going to make for very good uh, animated GIFs right here. So what I'm looking for here is I'm going to navigate to some images that appear as if they're a set of images that could be used to build the, the whole image. So as I move this, I want to see if I almost see what looks like frames of a movie and it looks like here I'm starting to see that and then it stops here. So what that looked like to me was 48, so image right here number 48 through image number 67. We could start with 57 and skip 48, but I kind of like what's going on with 48. So we'll take 48 through 67. We're going to right click these and put them into a stack. So group as a stack. Then we're going to take this whole stack, right click and open in camera raw. So that's going to open all these images in Adobe Camera Raw. So what I'm going to try and do right now in Adobe Camera Raw, I'm not going to try to, I'm actually going to do it, but what I'm going to attempt to do and show you is how to uh, fix all the settings for all the images in one fell swoop. So what I want to do is take the uh, straighten tool, straighten out my image here, and I'm going to just go through these settings rather quickly here. I'm going to lower the exposure to get more of the, the highlights back there. Maybe drop those highlights even more to get some more definition in those clouds. Increase the shadows. So I'm opening up some of this area. And I might even increase the contrast a little bit. Give this a little bit more warmth. Maybe a little bit more of that magenta tone to it. Look at my highlights, make sure nothing's blowing out. Look at my blacks, make sure nothing's blowing out. So I'm, I'm really being rather quick with this because it's really less about what I'm doing to the photo right now and more about how I build this GIF. So the other thing I can do is I could go into the graduated filter and make a new graduated filter. And let's say with the graduated filter, I wanna open up some more exposure here. So I'm gonna just make this exposure just a little bit brighter and just start right here and move this on up. Let me start right here, bring this right up to where the ocean meets the sky, right to about there. That should be good. I'll take that mask off and let's just increase that exposure, maybe increase the contrast. Look at our highlights. Highlights help those waves out a little bit and that looks about good to me. Don't need to get too crazy with it. I could add a new one for the sky. So that just the sky gets, gets one now too. And let's say we want to bring the exposure down just a little bit to make it a little bit brighter. So that, that kind of pushes that back a little bit, maybe uh, increase that contrast, give it a little bit more blue back there. And that looks good. So that looks good. So now with these settings, I'm going to grab right here, just press and hold shift and click on the bottom one, right click and go to sync settings. Now down here, the things that aren't being shown that if I were to sync them now, it really only be syncing all of the uh, basic adjustments that I did. If I press crop, it's going to sync the straightening of the horizon. And if I hit local adjustments, it's going to sync all of my gradients that I did as well. If I did any spot removal, I could do that too. Maybe I could come in here and move some of these spots if I wanted to, but I'm not going to be too nitpicky right now. And I'm going to press okay. So now you're going to see that it's going to go ahead and adjust all these images right away. If I go to the last one, 
you can see here we have those exact same gradients that we did before. So I'm done with these. I can go ahead and press done. So now what I want to do is I'm going to go up to tools and go to Photoshop and go to load files into Photoshop layers. So what that will do is it will take all of these images. How many do I have here? Um, nine images. I'll take all nine of these photographs and it'll bring them into Photoshop as a big layered document. So press load files into Photoshop layers and we'll let it run its course. So that whole process of running all of these into a layer stack like that could take a while. I know on this machine, it took about, uh, about 22 seconds when I timed it. Okay. So it's not that big of a deal, but, uh, it will take some time. So don't be too uh, worried if it doesn't work out for you. So a couple of things you need to know about animated GIFs. We're basically going to be creating a, a mini movie. That's what we're doing with this. When we make an animated GIF. So with that being said, there's a couple of things that we have to keep in mind here. Every one of these layers uh, has to have independent edits. So if I was to go down here and make a gradient map to say, maybe I want to color grade this a little bit. So if I color grade this, it would appear as if I'm color grading the entire stack because that's normally what would happen. I'm color grading every layer that's below it. However, the way this works is that if you want to color grade these, you're gonna have to color grade each individual layer. So you'd have to duplicate this many times. So you duplicate this several times and put it under each layer. And then what you'd have to do is merge those layers together by selecting them and pressing control E so that those would then be merged together. And the reason why you have to do that is because we're going to be bringing these into um, a, a movie animation and it's going to load all of our layers into that animation timeline. So if you were to have a gradient map here, it wouldn't necessarily load it like you'd think. So if you're working with a document where you want to show how you're building building up that entire image per se, like you're showing how to make a composite. You're going to have to make sure that every one of those layers is flattened down at its appropriate time. So you're going to, have to make a bunch of visible stamps essentially. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back. I'm not going to worry about doing that now. I'm going to go back. I'm just going to delete all these gradient maps because I don't really want to color grade this. I just wanted to show you that if you're going to color grade this or make any more modifications in Photoshop, you have to modify each individual layer. Okay. So let's go over here. Let's go to window and go to timeline. So now you're going to see this little option here. It's going to say create frame, frame animation or create video timeline. Creating a video timeline will make exactly that a video timeline. This create frame animation is more like uh, pulling each one of these individual frames in to make a mini movie. So when you click that, it's automatically going to have your one layer selected. So what we need to do is click this little line icon here. It's got several lines on it and go to make frames from layers. So when we do that, it's going to pull in all of our layers. So now what I want you to do before you move any further is just go ahead and click on these and see how it's operating. Now it looked like it pulled all these in reverse to me. So I'm going to move this one over here, over here to this side, move this one over here to this side. And then move this one over here to this side. So you gotta make sure that all of these come in the correct order so that when you do this, you don't, it doesn't look all odd or like the water is moving backwards because that could be interesting. So now we'll go through it again. Click and you can even press play right here and it'll show you. That's really fast. You see how, how fast that is? It's a really fast uh, animated GIF. So you see down here, you have the second control. So you can control how long each one of these will last. Well, if you click one and then press and hold shift and click the other one, as you click here, you can change this to 0.1 seconds and we'll see how that works. That's still rather fast. So I'm going to click down there and I'm going to go to 0.2 seconds and go to play. And that's a little bit better, but it still appears too fast. Let's go to 0.5 seconds. We'll just grab all of these and go to 0.5 seconds and press play. And that seems a little too slow. So what I'm going to do is grab this one, grab this one, and then let's go to something called other and make this 0.35 seconds and go, okay. If you want to be more on the even side and go 0.33, that's fine. Cause 0.33 would then make these nine frames turn into a three second clip. So you can go ahead and press play now, and that seems to be about a really good appropriate speed for this. So what we need to do now is save this as a GIF. This will be our GIF. And if you see down here where it says repeat once, you can do it three times so that when you pr press play on this, it will repeat it three times and then it'll stop. 
it would do the same thing. So if you were to record this as a three time re repetition, if this was on a website, it would only move three times and then stop on that final frame. Or you can tell it to go forever. I usually tell it to go forever because that's kind of cool. So what I'm going to do is press Control, Shift, Alt, and S. You're trying to save for web now. And I want to show you something that this is going to be a huge animated GIF if we leave it this size. The thing about animated GIFs is they're typically meant for the internet. So if you make them the full size of your frame, like this was a full frame camera, a Canon 6D, a nine full frame shots all put together like this, it's going to be 94.59 megabytes. That's huge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to image, go to image size, and I'm going to change this to something web friendly. Let's, let's call this 900 by 600 at 72 pixels per inch. So 900 by 600. The reason why we only do 72 is we don't need this to be 300 pixels per inch. We aren't printing it. It's an animated GIF. That would be an interesting thing to print anyway. So we'll press OK. So now that our image size is smaller, this is going to be a much more friendly file size that we can work with. So let's press Control Shift Alt and S, that would be Command Shift Option S on a Mac, which is the hotkey to save for web. So if you look down here, this GIF now is 3.274 megabytes, still relatively large, even for an internet save file, but it will work because I have tested it. So what you're going to see up here are several different presets that there are set for the web. Now, here are the settings that I would suggest if you want high quality. Now I've gone through all of these settings and I've saved them multiple times. So what I did on the website, if you go to f64academy.com, go down to the, if you're on YouTube right now, go to the description below and you can go to the website where you'll find all of the uh, different saved settings here. I, I did two different versions, one with dithering, one without dithering, so that you could see what it will look like when it's actually transitioned onto the web. So what I did was I saved a high quality GIF setting here. You can save your own presets as you see fit. We'll talk about that in a second here. So what you want, you want your color to be on selective at 256 colors, 256 total colors is what I'll be rendering. The other thing to pay attention here is to dithering. Now dithering, what dithering is, is it's a way that uh, it will kind of simulate um, transitions of tones. If you say no dithering, you're going to have these big splotches of, uh, of movement and it, it, you know, the colors kind of look like big color splotches, kind of like old bitmaps from like 1993 is kind of what it reminds me of. But you'll see that if you go to the web page, I, I save both different ones. So we want to set this to diffusion dither and you can set this dither they're up to about 100%. That's fine. Transparency. Uh, don't worry about the no transparency dither. You don't have to really worry about anything here too much. Down here, you want this to be set to by cubic, and then your percent at 100%, and this will be fine. So here, you can also set your looping options here. If you forgot to set your looping settings here, at this point, you can go to once or forever, or you can say other, and you can specify how many times. Let's say you want that to be five times, six times, 99 times. I don't know. Uh, you can you can specify that there. I'm going to go ahead and just go forever on this one. So if you wanted to save these settings, you can just come right up to here and go to save settings. And that would allow you to save those settings so that you could use this almost as a preset for all of your GIF saving. So we'll just go ahead and press save. And I'm going to save it into our folder here that I have all my images stored in. I'll just call this animated test. We'll press OK. So now I'll go down here and open up that folder. Look at our animated test. I didn't spell it correctly. And now you can see we have an animated GIF. Pretty cool. Let's do one thing. I'm going to go ahead and just cancel out of here and do this again. Control Shift Alt and S. And let's save this like one of these presets. Let's do the 128 no dither and press save. So we'll do animated animated test 128 no dither. And we'll save that and we'll open this up. So we have the animated test no dither. You can see now how there's big splotches of color kind of coming in on the sides. So the dithering will affect the file size. Uh, so if file size is important to you and you can sacrifice quality, then by all means, go ahead. If you look here, you're not going to see too much of a difference right here. The only time I would say to say, maybe say no dithering is if your image has a lot of texture or a lot of detail happening within the image. But if you have any sky like this where there should be a nice gradation, that's gonna be the problem because what the dithering does is it simulates that, that 
gradation of tone throughout uh, big splotches of areas like that. So you'll notice that the bottom of this doesn't look too bad, which is where our focus of attention is anyway. So if file size was important, you can go ahead and select no dithering. But if file size doesn't really bother you too much, then you go ahead and file size and quality don't bother you too much. Just go ahead and press uh, dither and put on diffusion dither at 100%. And all those settings are on the F64 Academy website, as I said before, in the description below. So just a quick recap, what we did was we went from Adobe Bridge, grabbed all of those images, went to Adobe Camera Raw, did a quick edit on them, went to Photoshop, and we put them in a timeline. So we made that timeline, went to Window, Timeline, opened up that timeline, and made a frame animation on the timeline. We made all the frames from our layers into there, reordered them so that it all looked right, put the right amount of settings on there for our seconds, so 0.35 seconds, and then we just saved it by pressing Control Shift Alt and S or Command Shift Option and S on a Mac to save for web. And again, dithering, if file size is not a big deal to you, but quality is important, no dithering if quality is not important to you and you're more concerned with file size or if the image you're working with has a lot of texture without big splotchy areas. So again, my name is Blake Rudis with F64 Academy. If you like this, please share it, comment on it, send it to a friend. Animated GIFs can be a lot of fun, and they aren't just for uh, poking fun at your friends and putting them on Facebook feeds. Uh, you can actually do some really cool stuff with them by making these mini videos. So if you haven't already, subscribe, because every Friday I put out a new tutorial, and you can get it first in your inbox when, as soon as that tutorial is live. Thanks again for watching. I do appreciate it. Thank you.